We've done this a couple times talking about you know, convergence points or modernization. I'm one who's been around for a long time, I've been in corporate America for 20 years, and I, I moved in consulting, and then I took a job as a chief security officer for Ontic. If you don't know that, it's a protective intel, intelligence-driven platform. But as I thought about convergence before, if you think convergence is an overused word, raise your hand. Everyone, please raise your hand. I mean, how many years did we hear people talk about convergence? Like, we need convergence, we need to do this. No action taken, except for a few groups. Actually, yeah, I believe, 10 years at least. But you slowly see it coming into where I think the idea of convergence is just something we're dealing with, like AI. I, was at a, I said I was at ATAP. AI was a big uh, discussion point. You know, I tried to go to all those things and listen. And the first thing out of the box is AI bad, AI bad, everyone dying, everyone run, and run, hide, fight from AI. It's here to stay. You know, it's a modernization point. I want to go like, hey, the 21st century called, deal with it. <clears throat> or, you know, generative AI called and said, deal with it. Um, but I was thinking something you said, Natasha, about generative AI and say, hey, look, if I'm a mom and pop organization, I'm an EP organization, I don't have, I'm not fortunate to have a Natasha Ryan on my payroll, what do I do? Well, maybe you ask generative AI. <laughs> what would be my top five? It's all in the questions you asked. Just something I was thinking about is why I come to these things, I'm like a mad professor, I have to go home and sit quietly for about an hour. But I, I was thinking on the flight in from Anaheim this morning of a quote from one of my favorite books, David Epstein's Range, which I think if you haven't read it, everybody should have it. You should make your folks read it, especially if you're in the physical space. Because for a long time, and Phelan and I have had this conversation before, we have this idea like, hey, I'm the bodyguard. I'm the specialist, I'm Jason Bourne, I'm Jason Bourne, James Bond, and uh, G.I. Joe rolled into one. But it's no longer what you know, it's kind of who you know, and I think that's a spot of modernization for a modern protector. And Epstein says in his book, and I wrote it down, and if I misquoted at 6 a.m., blame somebody else, now blame me. He said in the book, in a wicked world relying upon experiences from a single domain, not only not is it's only not limiting it can be disastrous and i think about tip of the spear of activities i don't mean navy seals dev grew folks or people on the cutting edge in cyber information operations uh, as long as a corporate career i also had 30 years in information operations uh, with the national guard so the, the discussion earlier today about the national guard and how and using public private uh, partners Find me on a break, and I got a ton of ideas about how you, how you can use that. But the gentleman at the table here today, and I hate it that we're so far apart, Craig. Um, don't let the divide separate us. Um, these are folks that are they're on the cutting edge in terms of we're there with the boss. We're there protecting the asset. You know, when we think of, of close protection, if, if you've not dealt with it in the audience, I don't want you to think just about the bodyguard or, or the, the Britney Spears slapper, and I, I followed that as well, and I felt really bad for him. But also asset. Hey, we're taking code in the wild. I've taken many coders, and I've taken many things out to data centers and had to help explain to um, uh, computer engineers that, hey, don't wear your, don't wear your Microsoft shirt, folks or your badge, and maybe don't, you know, and here's what you need to do to kind of blend in a little bit so you're not a target, because out here in the wild, you are. So as we think about that backdrop, and we think about protectors out there with people or things, maybe they're centers of gravity for our company or organization, and we talk about modernization, Mac, I want to come to you first. Uh, actually, yeah, I want to come to you first, Mac. And you and I have had this conversation, so a lot of what I want to talk to you about is just conversations we three have had before that I think is beneficial for anyone. Of course, if you have a question, you have a thought, please raise your hand. Mac, you and I talked before about um, EP in the moment. You know, we've said, like, we've sat down and said, hey, is EP modernizing? Is executive protection, is it modernizing? And we seem to be at a point where it's old meets new. And, and what I mean by that is, like, I did not grow up with a supercomputer in my hand. I didn't have a tricorder. I just fantasized about one when I was a kid watching Star Trek with my grandpa. But now people coming into our space, like data visualization, 
you know, uh, every, every agent is a telemetry machine. You know, it's, it's part of what they are. What, how can we, how can protectors find that convergent spot between the old ways, come with me if you want to live, I don't do bags, to now, I think as Fellum said earlier, we're nodes of telemetry, nodes of information in any given moment. Well, we don't have three days, so <coughs> we'll try and figure it out. Um, to the point of convergence, folks, we're way past there, right? Anybody who's speaking about convergence in, in our space in executive protection, that's like a doctor saying, oh, you know, I, I do palpation and I can feel stuff, but I don't, don't use MRIs and x-rays and all this technology. Not necessary, right? That's insane. Any doctor who said that, you will laugh them out of the room. It's the same thing in our space. If you're performing executive protection and you haven't converged with cyber, with IoT, Wi-Fi devices, with TSEM, with everything else, you are way behind the curve. Having said that, to Chuck's point about modernization, um, there has to be a happy medium. Because, yes, I've got a supercomputer in my hand, etc., etc., but I was with a client in Mauritius, and you'd be interested to know that there's pretty much no coverage outside of the hotel at all. No GPS, no uh, VPN, no Wi-Fi hotspot, just a paper map, right? And if you can't use one of them, you're going to have a that's, real problem that's, navigating the island. That's some old school stuff right there, man. Right? And I don't mean to sound like an old fart, but you need to have both, right? Because if your computer gets hacked or your system gets hacked that you're using, your application for your organization, and suddenly you're out there with a client and you don't have access, or your device fell in the toilet and it wasn't waterproof, and you don't have a hard copy backup, you're gonna have a problem. So there's this gap, this dissonance between the new generation who think all that old stuff is unnecessary, and the old generation who like can't pull themselves in to the 21st century. Um, but for organizations to provide effective protection today, you have to be cognizant of both. You have to be doing both. You have to be thinking and educating your people consistently. Drones, AI, the threat landscape changes every day. And as protectors, I hate that term, as service providers to our clients, we have to keep up. Uh, otherwise, we can't be truly effective. Well, for sure. I mean, look, EP is a business. Our business just has to be security, just like our folks on the, on the digital side. Our business, we're all business folks. Our line of business just happens to be protection or security. I mean, Lucian, how would you, you know, you and I had spoken before about the culture and Max, something I think you're kind of getting to too is a culture of the close protection industry of moving away from, hey, you know, I, I only do, you know, I'm a body person. I don't do bags. I don't do this to now I need to understand tech, but I can't, I can't get away from the old ways because you never know as a, as a backup failure, I'm going to have to pull the map out. Right, right. But we're talking about culture. I mean, Lucian, what's, what's culture's play in convergence and modernization, particularly in like a protector of physical space? Yeah, I, I really think that there is a, a mission creep uh, and has been happening probably without us observing and everything that we do, but in particular in EP, because the advent of AI puts a lot of tools in our hands in the EP space that we never had in the past, and you have to combine with what Craig said, a set of skills that you, you have to be able to navigate in an unknown space, you know, by stars or, or, or a hard map. So yeah. that creates a culture of conflict um, within, the, within an organization. It's a, it's a cultural one because you gotta bring those together and be able to leverage the AI, the old and the new, and that, you know, it, it may seem just just an intellectual exercise the organiz an organization has to go through, but it's really not because you run into problems and the quality of the decision making at mm -hmm. the EP level is completely torn apart. So that will put 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 a, t a target at risk, an asset at risk, and frankly, an entire organization. So it is a big thing, and I think a lot of people are not having necessarily enough time to think about it, but it's something that um, we all have to work on. That convergence yeah. has to happen pretty I think, quick. 
culture in particular, I wanted to bring that up because look, it takes, it can take years. We, you know, we've talked to uh, government folks and private folks today, .gov, .com, .le, .mil, .whatever you want to insert there. And if you have a leviathan of an organization, culture can take years to get it to where you want. If you just let culture run amok, well, good luck to you. You're going to need Natasha because something bad is going to happen. But if you think about insider threat, insider risk, managing culture is very difficult. But just like that, it can go south. So I think, in my mind, and anybody, please jump on this. You know, I think like if I'm the leader of an organization and I look at those people that are forefront physically with the assets, with the principles, with our centers of gravity, their forefront, we can, we can change and put a stake in the ground about our culture and about the perception of our culture because I think a lot of times, the per, you know, it's one of those memes like what, my, what, the, what the executive thinks I do, what I think I do, what my mom thinks I do, and then what I actually do. And I think there's something to be said about and I hate to keep bringing communications into it, but it's important you probably should be sitting on this because having that understanding with your comms people, like what is this company about? What is this organization about? And ensuring like, hey dude or, or young lady, I know you were this in the military. Maybe you were at uh, First Cyber or maybe you were at DevGrew or maybe you're somewhere else, but I need you to be this now because this is the culture we're in and we need, like a sheepdog, whether digital or physical, we need to exist in the space so that when something happens, we can react appropriately. Do you agree with that statement? Or? Absolutely, yeah, I agree. What would you add to that, Craig? I know. And yeah, thanks. Caca, uh, <laughs> caca. <laughs> um, as Lucian was speaking, what I was thinking about, you know, saying the, or and even Mac was like the, the old versus the new, right? right. And, and you're kind of someone I think when I look at it, and by the way, can I have just a really brief round of applause for someone who just got married a little bit ago? Yeah. Yeah. Hope you listen to this advice about the remote control. Right, yeah, um, I, I caught it. I was but you're angry. someone who kind of sits, you see, like I see the old parts, like I think Max said, mm -hmm. but then you also like, hey, I'm, I've embraced and I see, I see the, the technology, I see the change. I even see the mindsets that are, that are different. Yeah, the, it's the, I think there's an acceptance of, of the, the, what, the old, what the old guard, what the old farts, whatever, that what they have done or what they do isn't, isn't uh, totally, it's not, it's not useless. Like that's how we got to where we are. Um, and so there's, a, I think there's an acceptance of like, hey, let me, let me take what that, with that person or what that group of people or what the physical guys or gals or whatever has been done um, and taking that into account as we continue to be, like, you know, it does not repeat history um, or let's study it so we don't or so that we do. Um, so there's an, there's an acceptance of um, whether it's in culture or in the actual, um, you know, operations of what we do. Hey, let's look at, at, at where we've been, where we're going um, and, and embrace it. And, you know, as we can, we keep you keep running into the well. This is the, the, the place where this is what we've done, and this is what we're doing. This is this is no longer uh, applicable, or, you know, or is it? And having people that are, and really, you know, I think it was Mac who said it earlier. It's like you know, we, you know, we're selling services, but we're selling people, and the people that are willing to, to 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 come together, to uh, that want to actually modernize and. And the, um, I was talking to a gentleman today, so something in Arizona here, uh, tech, I can't remember what it was, but he, you know, he's a, a guy who's, he's, he's older, he's been, in the, he's been in the profession, but he, he wants to consistently learn. Um, and I think there has to be, a, a, there's a, a learning, um, you have to have a, a burning, a learning desire to, uh, to, 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 to want to come together with what are really your counterparts in, in an industry, sure. It's in security, well, whether it's think, physical, think about it. Like convergence, exactly. modernization, especially in a security realm, is probably predicated on three things: people, process, technology, and those are things that we go on. We 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 obsess about we obsess about threats. We obsess about the technology that will help us see and harness anomalies that we can then make uh, that we can then make decisions about. But at the end of the day, it's a person. 
You know, it's a person at the who's there with the boss or there with the asset that has to make decisions. You know, Craig, before we, we switch from you, something that I also want to ask you is like, you're very much, if you know Craig and you follow me, he's very much a networking person. And I think about something Phelan said, I, I mentioned it earlier, like it's not so much like what you know, you know, that old school, like I knew this, like I said earlier, but who you know. How should we think about modernizing and converging as security practitioners? Doesn't matter if you're a one and zero person or doesn't matter if you're a physical person. Should, how do we think about weaponizing our networks and changing the way we network to ensure that it's who we know, not just what we know? <clears throat> I was having this conversation just the other day along the lines of, uh, I, was, I was out in Vegas and it's a, you know, a guy, an EP guy, and it's like, you know, when he was talking to somebody, I, I can't remember exactly, but it was, you have a great network. Like, you know who you need to know, um, but you all do the same job. You're all, you know, you're all EP guys, you're all physical guys. Um, and so within networking, finding the, finding the group that you don't know, but the group that you also have to work with. Um, in our case, physical, you know, physical and not, or, or versus, but physical along with, um, with cyber, but then also too, the people that are close to the boss, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, and I think we've probably gone on about that with, uh, you know, with EP of like, you know, the, the, you know, the, the, the assistants, the manager, like everybody, you're on, the, if you're on the same team, you're on the same team. Uh, and, 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 and a word that Chuck, I've picked up from Chuck is there's way too much siloing um, in, in this because the, the end result is the, is the company that you work for and the protection of the company you work for, your client. So going into different circles, I guess the, the, the short statement is going into the circles that you're not usually spending time in is where you should be. Yeah, I think, I, I think there's a really good point to that because as human beings, I believe we have this bias to go towards what, what's similar to me. You know, I like this, I, you know, I like broccoli, not. I like pizza, I, you know, so I think there's something to be said for getting out of your convert, your, your own zone. Uh, something, when we were doing this in December, I had this epiphany moment where I, I was telling some folks like, look, if you're in physical security, and you need to go find who's ever, is anybody, who's an MSP here, anybody? So if you're in physical security, you need, you need everybody's business card right here because inevitably it works one of two ways. One, hey, I'm having this done. Do you know anybody that? Sure, I can call Mac. Or you're on a plane and the boss says, I need this done. Do you know anybody that can? Which is far more of that conversation of who you know, where it used to be, I need you to do this. Because at, at the end of the day, I think of like, especially digital and cyber, and I've ran both sides. You know, I ran executive protection, global intel, protective intel, event security. And then my last three years, I went and worked for the CISO and started a strategic intel team because he said, hey, look, I have all these, I have all these threat indicators, but nobody's telling me how I should think. And that kind of struck me because especially in a corporation that was full of computer engineers and this and that, everyone was trying to come at them from their own point. Like, look, I, and from that, I got this idea that what's required, <clears throat> common operating information, common operating language, which leads to a common operating picture, not for us, for the decision makers. And if we start with common telemetry, and then we get, you know, it, whether it's Robin's egg or navy blue or whatever, we recognize it's blue, and that blue means something to us when we go to the boss and we have that crisis communication because it's in a breach or somebody's attempted uh, the life of a principal or we lost uh, a box of something interesting in the wild. We're all coming at it to enable decision making because we're all business people. Our business just happens to be security. Mac. Is there such a thing as too much modernization and too much convergence in this spot from a physical security standpoint? Is there a point where you're like, TMI people, I just need to do my job? I think there's a balance, a happy balance. So 
Well, what I've heard most of the day is we talk about protection and threats and we go on and on and on. Um, I don't think that's what I do for my clients. Yes, at the very core, we protect their physical well-being and their information, their reputation. But 99% of my job is facilitating their success and optimizing their business operations on the ground. They land wherever they land. Everything needs to happen, right? Okay. So when you ask an EP team, so what's your emergency response plan for a cyber incident? And uh, <laughs> what? That's exactly. And they kind of get the deer in the headlights, a what? I said, well, what happens when you're with the CEO uh, and he turns around and he goes, hey, look at the screen of my tablet. What does that mean? I don't expect the EP agent to solve it, but I do expect them to know who to call to Chuck's point, right? No, we can't become cyber experts, etc. but we need to have a plan. That has to be in our toolbox, right? So when people start saying, oh yes, well, I'm an EP agent, I'm gonna go do this course in coding and in cyber, and then to Chuck's point, I think we're going overboard. That's not our ballywick. We cannot be everything to everybody, right? But we do need to team up with people who are experts in those uh, well, areas yeah. because we do need protection. I think there's something, especially if you're in a corporation, of forming what I would call hub of activities. We could, if we wanted to be like, if anybody remembers the show 24, if we wanted to say we're going to have reach back, but everyone needs a Chloe. And we did that before where it's like, hey, look, the boss is experiencing this. She says I need something. We need reach back. I need somebody I can call and say, hey, look, I'm here working this piece. I need you to fix this for me. We did this a lot in my unit. We have people deployed after 9-11, right up until the point that I left all over the world at listening posts. And our whole thing was we had to have a team of reach back to do what? Whatever they need. You know, if I need somebody that understands Python or I need somebody that can tell me what the Samsung, you know, the Bluetooth capability of a Samsung monitor is that the boss is going to be in front of because we're worried about, um, you know, ex uh, the extinction uh, the extinction group coming on and maybe hacking into that blue. I mean, we just need answers and we need to be polymathic enough to say, got it. I can, I can take this and cut the blue cord, right? Yeah. Or, or look at something. I mean, Lucian, what's your approach to like how we as physical folks should look at new technologies or do we not want to be early adapters? Well, it's, it's, I'm not a proponent of being an early adapter on, it's too much at but risk. But Kim's like, no. Yeah, <laughs> it's, I think it's too much at risk, but it's, again, it's a personal opinion. Um, it, from my experience, and it's not as vast as this fine gentleman next to me, um, it, it, it can run, can run a, a unit into trouble, not an organization. I think there's a way to, to test new technology and, and again, we, we're, we're, be, we're becoming a field, the physical security and the cyber security, where I foresee that in the next five to eight years, if not sooner, everything is going to blend and the convergence not well, going to even I, be a word. Uh, I had but, a conversation with a guy at ATAP and we were talking about phishing. And then we were talking <laughs> about generative AI. We started talking about some of the recent hacks that we've seen involving trying to get credentials from the executives yep. and the kind of uh, probably m maybe after a couple gin and tonics, the, the discussion we had is around, we think fishing is something now. I mean, five years from now, it, it's, gonna be, it, it's gonna be an entirely new landscape. So it got me to thinking about this like fine line between when is it okay to, to press you know, the accelerator on new tech and at what's the, what's the edge where you say, this, this affects us directly, we can't do it. Right. Um, Craig, what do you think about that? I mean, you're, again, you're of this table, I'm not saying you're the youngest, but I've known you a long time, and you're far more you know, willing to adapt to, to new technology. Do we dare? I think we were talking maybe about this last week, is like how, how far ahead do we want to be um, how and when I say that, meaning, what's the, what's useful to us? It's like, oh, it's great, you know, th these technologies that come out, that you know, they're they're great, um, but are they applicable to what we're doing right now? That's a good point. 
And so, and, 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 and but it's shiny. But, but it's, well, absolutely. Or if you're a Spinal Tap fan, it's got 11. Yeah. So, yeah, and, 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 and. But it's so, uh, so that's what it, that's, uh, when I think about it, it's how far, how far out do we want to, do we want to be, do we, do we want to bring more tools that we don't need yet uh, while we're still mastering the ones that we are using? Um, yeah. And so, you know, are we playing catch up or, or playing too far ahead? Mac? Yeah, no, to Craig's point, uh, we were discussing, somebody approached me with a technology um, which is amazing, uh, a counter surveillance technology that will pick up on surveillance. And the AI has is it been, all on a Bluetooth device? Yeah, the, the, well, no, it, it's, a, it's, it's, it's an AI device and it's got the entire basically uh, Israeli intelligence uh, methodology of surveillance. And it's a camera that you can mount and will follow and map everybody and blah, 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 blah. And it only costs, you know, half a million dollars. And I said to him, that's super, nobody's following my clients. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Right? It's super duper. And if I have a client who's in that threat category that I'm worried about surveillance, then we'll do a cost benefit analysis. But to Craig's point, there's a lot of interesting tech out there, but there has to be a correlation. Everything has to be threat based. What are the probable and critical threats to my client? Which technologies do I need to mitigate, contain, and control those threats? And just because it's shiny doesn't mean we have to buy it for the company. One last question for y'all, but uh, what, does anybody have a comment or a question from the audience? Yes, yeah, sir. I mean, that's, I'm glad you brought that up because, like, AI right now, which we used to call machine learning, those of us who are serious about don't it. Don't get me started. <laughs> AI, that's not AI, kids. I don't know if we'll hit a full third AI winter, right? Because that's been pitched twice before, and it did tons of money, and then it died. And the problem is, like you said, is it needed, but also, what are its limitations? And it's incredible because I we had a, an ISSA event where someone gave a talk. They hadn't even heard of prompt injection, right? And most people are still unfamiliar, even though the research goes back decades. When you look at catastrophic interference, model collapse, which is now starting to get covered, like these tools can be really useful if you understand what they can and cannot do. Let me ask you a quick question. If you're if, if you were going to, and I'm a big proponent in the military and in my dot-com world of like, look, everyone needs to understand capabilities. So what capabilities from like a digital side do you think someone on the on the front edge, if you will, like a you know, bodyguard or executive protection or something, how would you brief them on capabilities? What would you, actually let me rephrase it. How would you say, here's how I think you should think about it? Not what to think, how to think. I mean, Sorry, you're I'm just curious. We probably don't have enough time to really go into that. But the quick answer is, which, like, again, AI is a blank. Well, let's just say, because, you know, most of the folks in our space, just like I came from ATAP, and I, I appreciate that they're thinking about it, but it's like AI, and they're yeah. putting everything. And it's, in fact, it's not everything. So I guess the, the key thing to understand, what are all of these things, all the thousands of different algorithms, self-organizing maps and random forests, and deep convolutional nets and all this, what do they all have in common? You take a ton of data and you throw it at these things, really high dimensionality data, and it finds all the patterns. I can't wait for quantum. Right? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, no, so your breath. I'm not. That's something that is useful, is finding patterns where that can be used against you. Right. That's when you need to pay attention. I love it. But they do do weird stuff, like the language models are language models, not logic models, right. so they'll lie to you. It's just patterns, and patterns and understanding are not the same thing. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Oh, um, so I'll, I'll play devil's advocate against technology a little bit. I'm with you on your point, though, by the way. But for me, at my level, I have to consider significant risks. Yeah. Right. Right now, if I ask every single one of you to go take a Wemo, how many of you say yes? I'll let that car drive on its own, right? So you got to think about it. I have a great, 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 great story about that later. I, I just yeah. don't let but nevertheless, most people, even at the executive level, you're not willing to play with people's lives, right? Yeah. You're not, you're not throwing coins here. So naturally, I got to consider at my level how the EP person's like, oh, I got all this great technology. I'm like, yeah, listen, what's the reliability of that, right? Sure. It's so, 100%. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm actually going to tag on to Elio's answer a little bit to respond to, you know, what, what can we do and how should we look at it? So. 
I really love the fact we're starting to use the same terms, like threats and risks, and being able to apply like that common model of prioritization to what we should look at. So that's that's the evaluation of how I was. I think it, that is, if we could take anything away from this entire day, if we could all understand that, no, nobody gives two craps about how our tribes speak. They all need to speak the same language because decisions need to happen in a rapid manner. Right. While we're arguing about the color of the boathouse at Hereford, the bad guys are just looking for cracks. Right, and, I'll, and if, if I can throw in, so as a joke, of course, I'm a cyber guy, as you might be able to tell. I, I would love to trade services <laughs> on my cyber for physical security. But it, it's also just a matter of like, it, it probably isn't that mature of the integration yet. So what we do in our practices is to do like tabletop war games, right? Like let's talk through the scenarios where it makes sense and the handoff points. Red teaming at scale is such a lot like yeah. red teaming. The physical guys are like, yeah, coming to get you I'm and gonna, duct tape you. And the cyber guys are like, we've yeah. had tested you. I'm, I'm going to lose that fight. But, <laughs> no, but I, actually, I actually think red teaming at scale and wargaming is also something else that you can do yourself and it's lost on people and you can bring many aspects. One last question for all of you. Is convergence and modernization the same or different? Matt, go. Different. Pollution. Different. Great. Yeah, different. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got, I got one thing I'm really curious about. Yeah, yeah. 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 side channels. Have you followed some of the, the sensing using ambient Wi Fi? Because that has matured over the last decade where you can see through walls, you can hear yeah. through walls. So it's insane. Lieutenant Colonel Randolph went to National Defense University a decade ago. Um, and as a result of that, I was able to tour a bunch of facilities out. And there was stuff the Secret Service was doing back then. And it wasn't about the, it wasn't about like, hey, I'm the Wi-Fi, the network person. It was all about that. And it, it, it's frightening. I mean, it's frightening. But it kind of goes back to an old, like, if they're going to get you, they're going to get you. But, you know, protection folks can't say that. I mean, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> but the difference is the economics, like the Tempest attack, where they can look at your monitor. And it's getting. There are two repos on GitHub. That is open source. Yeah. You don't need millions of dollars. You don't need the NSA. That's open source. And it's getting cheaper and, and more useful, and you can buy those kids. But folks, I'll talk to you all. All right, okay. <laughs> Link up offline. I want to make sure we get folks where they need to go. Thanks, Mac, Lucian, Craig. Thanks so much. Thanks.